How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood med student. And today we're going to be covering uh, animal tranquilizer in street drugs and why it should be something that's concerning. And before I get started with today's video, I really want to emphasize that this video is not to shame anyone who's struggling with drug addiction. If you're here to comment nasty things about people who are struggling with a drug, drug addiction, um, I'm sorry, but please do something more significant with your life and actually try to contribute to making people better or if you don't think that these people are worth you know helping at least try to help yourself to see why uh, the way that you're thinking is really really um selfish but um other than that uh if you are someone who's watching this who do struggle with drug addiction know that there are doctors out there who really care about you there are addiction uh, medicine doctors who want to help you through the process of recovery. So if you are ever ready for recovery, all you have to do is go online, search for addiction medicine providers, and they can help you through a um, process of recovery in a harm reduction path so that it is seamless, streamlined, and accepting for you to go through this process. Anyways, I'm on your side, and one day I am going to take care of people struggling with addiction. So. Uh, I want to be in solidarity with you, not against you. The reason why I am uh, choosing this topic to cover is specifically because of how dangerous it can be to people who are accessing drugs on the street, uh, like heroin and fentanyl and other drugs, because the FDA issued on November 9th a uh, warning towards all doctors who take care of those who struggle with addiction that there is an animal tranquilizer that's found legally in the vet supply called xylazine um, that's being contaminated in heroin and fentanyl samples which is very very scary and i'm going to explain why uh, already a lot of cities have been seeing this kind of phenomenon where um, someone comes in with a drug overdose we think it's heroin we think it's fentanyl we're giving them naloxone which is the recovery drug if someone overdoses we give naloxone when they are taking opiates to uh, come back but it's not working why is it not working it's because the drugs that they're using was contaminated with xylazine now as of right now we don't have enough data on how much the uh, drug supply opiate drug supply out there actually is contaminated with xylazine but the fda has noticed that enough enough cases have been reported that we need to be vigilant about it especially doctors who are taking care of those who come in uh, with overdose uh, overdose, and we need to help them recover. Already there's major cities that have been uh, kind of been on the news headlines such as Philadelphia that's shown that a lot of people are overdosing on drugs but there's xylazine in it and we don't have we don't have a recovery drug for xylazine because it it's never been used on humans really in the, in the past couple of decades xylazine is only used on animals so we've never developed a recovery drug for it and naloxone doesn't work on xylazine another thing i really want to emphasize what's making the street drugs even more dangerous with xylazine contamination is that when someone comes in with an overdose and they have symptoms of sluggishness they have symptoms of you know not being able to breathe right they're shallow breathing we think it's opioids and usually these patients have taken opioids from their knowledge they don't know that they're taking xylazine and unfortunately we can't really tell the initial symptoms apart between the two so because we want to act quickly because you can die pretty quickly from drug overdose is that we administer naloxone but if the naloxone is not working doctors should be aware that xyl xylazine contamination could be a cause of why naloxone isn't working so it's imperative imperative for any doctor who's taking care of or any medical provider on the scene where naloxone isn't working rush them to the er immediately and tell the e ed that there could be xylazine contamination in whoever that is overdosing now because we don't really have a 
uh, a drug to help with overdoses like naloxone for xylazine. The treat standard treatment of care right now is supportive care, which honestly doesn't really mean a lot. It just means that we're going to give them fluids, we're going to treat the symptoms as they're coming, but we don't have that drug to help them come back. So we're going to have to um, just treat the symptoms as they come, which can be very dangerous because it's never a guarantee for us to be for us to be able to save a patient who is who has just overdosed on a drug with xylazine contamination. Now, when it comes to the data, um, back in 2015, the percentage of xylazine contamination in the drug supply was about 1%, which less than 1% actually, which honestly, you know, something that's concerning, but nothing that um, rings the alarm bells. But now in 2021, there was an increase up to 6.7% of the drug supply being contaminated with xylazine. That is almost a 6% increase in how much drugs that's being contaminated with this animal tranquilizer. So I wanna end this last section of this video with actually talking about what can you do as a bystander when you're out there and you see someone overdosing on a drug. Someone else has come and given this patient naloxone. Naloxone isn't working. We're still waiting on the emergency response uh, vehicles to come in and take this patient to the hospital. What can you do to prevent deaths of patients who are overdosing on drugs with xylazine contamination? The main thing that you should know about xylazine is that it causes respiratory failure, meaning that it causes the person to stop breathing or extremely slow down their breathing to the point where it becomes incredibly de deadly. So what you should do immediately is to begin giving this person rescue breaths until EMS arrives. How do you give rescue breaths? Just give one breath through the mouth, holding the nostril every five seconds until EMS gets there. Now, some of you may be wondering, well, what about xylazine test strips? Because earlier when the fentanyl crisis was like skyrocketing, and even here in Atlanta, fentanyl was, people, fentanyl was being hit hard in the drug supply, uh, especially fentanyl contamination, fentanyl test strips started being given out in community by community organizations out to people who are interested in getting them. Unfortunately, we don't have xylazine test strips available right now, so please, please, please stay vigilant and do those rescue breaths and wait for EMS to arrive. Remember that uh, in a lot of states, you are protected by bystander laws. You're protected by laws that help you report an incident uh, for reporting an incident and you not getting in trouble, just making sure this person stays alive and just look into your state's laws around that. But most states have already adopted this policy because we want people to live. We don't want anyone to die from drug overdose. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned something from this video and I hope that you'll share this information with someone who may benefit from this information. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism work. And I'll see y'all in the next video and hopefully it won't be as concerning as this one. Mwah. This is Ben.